Coming up next, On The Spot. It's a full rotation of Xbox 360 games. GameSpot editors will be coming at us from all angles with demonstrations of cameo elements of power, Project Gotham Racing 3, Madden NFL 06, Amp 3, Condemned Criminal Origins, and Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official game with the longest name. We're building a show to resemble an inhale, live and on the spot. <laughs> It's that kind of show today, yeah. dude. It's that kind of show. Hey, everyone. Rich Galvin, host of On the Spot. And we have an entire show featuring what can be found in this box right here. Although technically not what's in this box because you were holding what That's actually right. was in this I'm box. That's right. I'm what's in this box. It's we, one of these things. We have a whole bunch of Xbox 360s here. Gamecube No, wait. What? Xbox 360. No, it's Xbox Sorry. 360. Yeah. It comes out next Tuesday, but we have it today. We are playing... Cameo, Project Gotham Racing 3, uh -huh. Condemned Criminal Origins, Madden, King Kong, Amp 3, and maybe, you know, if some surprises show up while we're talking, we'll bring them on, we'll play those too. Awesome. We have right now standing by Ryan McDowell, Greg Kasavin. Hey, fellas. What's hey. up? How's it going, man? It's going well. What are you guys about to play? We've got a little cameo over here. Indeed. You're going to play some cameo? Oh, yeah, definitely. Very nice. Uh, Greg obviously already reviewed it. Jeff, we've had a lot of reviews go up for games so far. Yeah. What's the general feel of them right now? You know, there, there's, there are some games out there that are really sharp. Um, you know, I've been playing Need for Speed, and, and that's, uh, I've been a big fan of that. We have a review of that going up later today. And then, uh, you know, there's stuff like Call of Duty 2, NBA 2K6, and, of course, you know, Cameo is, looks really cool, too. So th there's definitely some very cool games coming out for the system. Cool. Well, i got, I got to put out the disclaimer right now. Today's show, you know, normally we like to have the demos and then some guests, and, uh, and then we play, like, tape segments in between. Today, demos only. That's right. We're bringing it. Let's see. You're, you're going to be here. here. We've got Greg. We're going to have Brian, I'm Alex, a walking Ryan, demo. Brad. Who knows who's going to show know what up? That means. All playing, all yeah. playing 360 games. Totally. You're a walking demo. Yeah. That's great. I'm a demonstration for something. Sure. Well, let's start your demo. All right. Cool. So I've got this controller here, wireless. It works. Awesome. Um, and let's uh, let's take a look at the dashboard. Sure. Let's. Yeah. Go ahead. So this is the uh, dashboard or Xbox guide, as they uh, as they sometimes call it. They mm -hmm. kind of go back and forth. So you have these blades here, and let you kind of go back and blades. forth. Blades! Blades! And, uh, the here, sides kind of represent an inhale. Yeah, the, yeah. the, the blades are meant to represent <laughs> an inhale. Okay. Um, so you can go through, and it starts you out with the Xbox Live tab here. You've got you know, your friends list, uh, messages that you get from people, which so far I've just been getting Halo 2 game invites, like always. But sure. I just keep declining, declining, declining. <laughs> um, because they don't, they don't go away. It's like a, you have a, like a static inbox that, that fills up even when you're not online. Awesome. So that's pretty crazy. That's cool. Um, so yeah, you have uh, your, your gamer tag, uh, which you know, is basically the same as it worked uh, on the old Xbox. Uh, you can actually change it now, though. If you pay them a, a small microtransaction, you can change your gamer how, tag. How well much a, of a microtransaction are we talking about? It's here? like 800 points or 400 points or some I kind of crazy. Like One point is, is uh, a cent and a quarter. A cent and like, a quarter, yeah. Cent, yeah. That's not 26 cents. That's one point. Right. One, that's 1 1.25 yeah, one cents. Yeah, Yeah. Math. Sweet. So anyway, show us what you got. What else you got here? So moving on, you with the games tab, and, and here's where you keep track of your achievements, which uh, you'll get from playing games, and also the Xbox Live Arcade, uh, which is where you can go online and actually purchase a, a lot of uh, pretty cool little games. Some of these games have appeared on the PCs, like shareware products. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are classic arcade hits. Let's, let's see let's, some, Let's dive we? right in. So let's take a look at actually how it works really quick here. So you just kind of go in, hit download games. They've got it broken up by genre. Mm -hmm. You can uh, go into action here, and you can see Crystal Quest, Geometry Wars, which we'll be playing later. Awesome. Mute, Storm Reloaded, Wick Fable of Souls. Um, and the coin-up classics is where there are some midway games. Um, so then you can go in here after you've purchased a game, and uh, you see we've already uh, picked up a few. And you can see uh, down there on the right side of the screen, that's your achievements. Awesome. And what this is is if you achieve things in these games, like reach level wave five, uh, get 10,000 points, or you know they, they basically vary from game to game, they go into your gamer score. All right. And that's uh, tied to your overall profile, so how many games you've played and all this stuff. You can, you can earn a lot of points. See, I thought, now here's where I was confused, because I thought when you earn these points in your gamer score, yeah. you could then spend those on some nice no, Call of Duty 2 wallpaper. Yeah, separate points. Really? Yeah, like the points for your gamer score is just like bragging rights, like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm good at games, and then the, the points, the other points you have to buy. Though they say that they're going to have some kind of contests and other stuff that you'll be able to win points Slam that do. way. Get right. Slam-a-do. Slam-a-do gets some points. Actually, as uh, director Tim Tracy just pointed out, I think we should call them bits. Bits? Bits are the money, like shaving a haircut, sure. two bits. Yeah, all right. Yeah, so you need some Microsoft bits. So you need bits 400 for bits, 800 bits. Yeah, that'd be a lot more fun. So why don't we you know, stop talking about games, start playing games? Yes. 
Geometry Wars. Let's see it. Now, what uh, is Geometry Wars? This game was originally like an unlockable item in Project Gotham 2. Okay. And uh, basically, they've updated it and made a super crazy version of it for the 360. And uh, it is a lot like Robotron. The crazy thing is that there are like five games on Xbox Live Arcade uh, that are basically Robotron. Sure. But that's great, because Robotron is awesome. This game looks awesome. So basically, you're just a little dude, and you shoot things. Yeah, I shoot stuff. So yeah, <laughs> more or less. Uh, but it gets it gets pretty crazy here. It's uh, you know a lot of really wild particle business happening here. Graphics so cool. I'm basically using both analog sticks to play this game. You That's use it. one you to shoot, move, one to shoot, all the and then the triggers are for bombs when things get a little too crazy. Are they crazy yet? They're not crazy. You you'll know when they're crazy. Are they, is it crazy yet, dude? You'll know. Game Spell Complete members, my favorite part of the show is obviously hearing from you. I'm going to fire questions at you, Jeff, while we wait for it to get All right, crazy. lay it on me. My cowlick is amazing today, by the way. All right, let's see. <laughs> All right, there's obviously a lot of questions that are going to be about HD and... Uh, and it's uh, starting to get sort of crazy. Oh, is it? Oh, look at that. Look at that. Oh, I can see the geometry coming into effect. I, and I am fighting the geometry. I am sure. at war with geometry. All right, so ex please explain what we've seen so far uh, comparing. We see, I have a lot of questions here about it, how some of these games that we're going to see today aren't as sharp in standard definition. Do you need an HD TV basically to enjoy the Xbox 360? Uh, to take the Xbox 360 to its fullest potential, right. yeah, you, you, you definitely do. Some of these games look uh, just fine at standard resolution. Some of them look uh, not so great. So, uh, you know, it really is kind of a, an experience varies from game to game sort of deal. Well, I will tell every game that we will be watching today will actually be in standard definition. Right. Because yeah. we are streaming on a little window on the internet. Right. Cool. All right, let's see another game, dude. Actually, did you fire a bomb yet? No. Just do it. All right. It's crazy enough. Oh! oh. And then the whole thing goes wow, wow, wow. That's cool. All right, so, yeah, all right. New game. So I can basically bring up the dashboard at any time. That's actually, when you bring up the dashboard there, that's where you can actually change the music that's playing at any point. Really? Yeah. That's cool. So you can use custom soundtracks. I, yeah. I have a question if you guys don't mind cutting in real quick. Hit, hit us, Ryan. What, what, about the, what about the whole crazy, like, you know, Jeff Minter, you know, audiovisual show for the music stuff? Yeah. Uh, well, why, why don't we show you a little bit of that? That's a, that's a, good, that's a good We'll take a look. Thing, yeah. So I have, I have an iPod here. Uh, Let's switch it's to the let's switch iPod. to the view of what happens when you plug in this, this yeah. iPod. Yeah. So we go over it's to the. It's not shoe pod. This is not shoe pod. It's not shoe this pod. Is, this is Ryan's okay. iPod. Which well, is why I was looking for shoe pod. Up. He's not here yet. Um, so we go over to the music tab here, and you see you can uh, get music from a variety of different sources. If you have any in the in the Xbox hard drive, if you're networking off of your PC, but then we plug in the iPod here. You make it sound so easy, like so. And then what happens? We take a look at the screen and waiting. I'm waiting. Waiting. I'm waiting. Waiting. Is, is your iPod on? Waiting. <laughs> it's totally not doing anything, dude. That's really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's the power of the live is internet. It is it plugged it in? Is pl it is indeed plugged in. I don't even, is, I don't okay, even know. well, let's, let's unplug it from the iPod here, plug it back right, in. Let's see what happens. It seriously worked, like, just... Okay, now it's going to go. Oh, okay, now, there we go. Ah, and now, now it's there. Now so. it's Smell You Losers Later. Right. So so we, we, whose iPod is that? It's Ryan's. That's great. Ryan Davis. Yeah. That is a great name for an iPod. So then you can go over here and, and uh, you know, basically navigate through the iPod, pick mm -hmm. what music you want to play, and so on. This is one of my favorite albums. It's a pretty hot, hot album. You're right. Yeah. So, yeah, so you can actually just plug in an iPod and, and go right there, um, and we can actually go back and play one of those songs and get the visualizer going. Look, looking at the at this setup they have here with the blades and whatnot, it kind of reminds me a little bit of what they have with the PSP interface. You know, you scroll left to right and right. different options yeah. and then you can go up and down through that. It's just a little different graphic. So there's the visualizer there oh, and okay. uh, you can actually Ryan make it for. full screen as well. Ooh. So, yeah, and then basically you have control over it. You can change the visualizer and then both the analog sticks let you kind of rotate it and move it around. Um, so back in college right now. Yeah, it's okay, I guess. I, I've, I've seen, I don't know, I've seen this stuff done better for all the, the talking up they did of, of how amazing this thing is. It, it's it's pretty good, but, you know, stuff like Milk Drop and, and some of the other stuff that's available on, on PC and LNL as well right. seem to be better, basically. So it works. It's, it's fun. It's, it's better there. than what they had in the... Uh, right, yeah, the original Xbox, that thing was... Just not using it at all. Really lame. Are there any other parts of the Xbox 360 that we should be uh, more checking out while you're here? Games. All right, fine. play one more game, and I'll find right. some questions for cool. you. Yes. All right. Well, we're going to count you as our as our as our standard. Just 
channel, Xbox 360 guru right now. All right, lay it on me. All right, Pierre Wills in Dunkirk, Maryland. What is the Dunkirk? battery life on the wireless controllers? Um, we actually don't know. We've, we've been uh, using them plugged in a lot because, mm -hmm. you know, we have so many different Xboxes here that to try and use the wireless, you know, someone would be trying to marry theirs to their Xbox at the same time you are, and, you know, you'd end up crossing wires and getting all kinds of crazy. So we haven't really done too much in the, in the way of, of battery testing just yet, but I haven't had one die on me yet either. So, so far, so good. Cool. All right, I'm, I'm still looking for more questions here. A lot of people are asking the same stuff about the HD. Uh, the, here's a, Amir Gabe in Israel. All right. The controller for the last Xbox, it was pretty heavy. It was kind of heavy. How is the new one? It's kind of heavy. Is it still? No, I, I don't think it's quite as heavy, but yeah. I, there, there's definitely uh, there's some heft there's to some it. There's some heft to it. Yeah. Now what are you playing, by the way? This is Robotron. Which awesome. Is, uh, this game is a lot like Robotron. It's a Robotron clone um, of Robotron. Though it has uh, Xbox Live support for co-op play, so one person can move while the other person shoots, which is really weird. They have, they've also redone the graphics a little bit. But uh, at its core, totally Robotron, dude. Cool. That looks good. Can, do you, are there any other games you want to play, or is that? Is that... I just kind of want to play Robotron. All right. Well, you play Robotron. I'll ask you one last question. Uh, here's one, uh, Christian Giron in Rialto, California. Yes. Uh, have there been any changes to the quality of the, of the 360 face plates? Have you have you been switching them off and stuff? No. 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 Haven't haven't really. Should we try it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. All right. Well, no, th those things seem fragile once you get them off. To Do be they, honest, really? I, I, the the E three one seemed like it was going to break apart in my hand when I touched it. So it seems like the sort of thing that you want to put it on and leave it on, and then if you buy a second one, you know, lock the old one away so it doesn't get sat on or destroyed cool. or, or well, something like well, that. Well, Robotron does look great. I want to get us going on the real games. This is the realest game. No, around, no, it friend. is not. Right, because we we have a lot of great games. Although this game is look awesome. All right. We're get, fine. We're, we're gonna we're gonna shortly. Okay. All right. I want to. I want to give a quick plug though, because I feel like we haven't really given just talking about the system itself. It's due mm -hmm. that we should tell people to go where to on the site right now to find out more about the 360. Dude, I don't know. No, the Xbox 360 launch site. Right. We've got all kinds of stuff about uh, the hardware, and of course, that's a, a really easy way to get to all of our coverage of the system, reviews, previews of the upcoming games. All that stuff in one easy to find place. I was also actually trying to plug the hotspot from yesterday. The what? Uh, the hotspot, our internet radio show. Because internet the radio podcast. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, go to the features page, look yeah. for hotspot, and uh, Greg and Jeff and Bob and myself. We talk about the 360 for like 25 minutes or yeah. something like that. We, we chop it up. Talk really. about. I was actually yeah. just trying to move the hard drive and I can't do it. I didn't, See, I didn't, it's, you gotta. Yeah. It's actually the button is actually part of it, which is the confusing oh, it thing. Is? So yeah, pretty big. That's huge. Yeah, it's not fitting in your mm -hmm. pocket. I don't really have a pocket. Really no I yeah, I don't know why it would detach unless they're going to sell bigger ones later. That doesn't really seem like or a... smaller ones. Yeah, like like the or nano like TC there. ones or I something. I want my yeah. Xbox 360 Nano hard drive. I, see, I wish the hard drive looked like it was an inhale. I think that would look cooler because <laughs> uh, the way it is now, it's looks it's just kind of like half of like one yeah. right there. Yeah. Anyways, are we ready for some cameo, yes, gentlemen? Sir. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you, Jeff, Greg, and Ryan. Take it away. Uh, actually, yeah. So, Greg, you uh, you've already reviewed cameo Indeed. Elements Power, so. Here it is, live and in person. Yep. How, how is it? It's it, it's really cool. It's it, it's you know really one of the better games like this I, I've played in a long time. Um, it, it's just really creative and has a lot of really kind of cute and interesting stuff that makes for a really good contrast to something like Condemned, <laughs> <laughs> which I've also played through. But um, you're going to be showing us a little bit later, right? Yeah, actually, in in regard to the. Uh, to the question about battery life, we just we just had yeah. one of our uh, wireless controllers kind of seem to start to give out on us, so we just switched to one of the wire, wired ones for what it's worth. But for all the, you know, I probably played like, I don't know, like 30 hours worth of Xbox 360 games so far, and, and it's... Uh, it's, it's held up? Yeah, I, I haven't had to do too much in the way of battery stuff. Right on. So um, in Condemned, the whole hook is that you can turn into all these different creatures, basically, literally, at or the touch cameo. of a button. Right, right. Oh, did I say condemn? Yeah, yeah. that's all right. It's easy to get the two mixed up. <laughs> see. So, um, and, and a lot of them are really cool. I'm here in, uh, in this uh, snow, snow temple level, which is probably a little more than halfway through the game. Um, so this is stuff that people probably haven't seen yet. Yeah, right? it, exactly. This is some of the later forms. I really like this uh, this cool. slime guy. Yeah, he's one of my favorites. He's just kind of dripping weird stuff and has this kind of bionic commando action. Now there's a there's a ton of different forms you can take on. There right? there are ten different forms total. Yeah, wow. and and basically you just uh, you you can map them to the controller buttons. So you just 
you know, just this, really this guy's also really cool. It turns into Super Mario Sunshine basically as soon as you <laughs> turn into that guy. Uh, let me just take care of some some. That seems to be. I've noticed here. while you're playing, when when Jeff and Rich were gone, Smart this is definitely yeah. one of the ones that you seem to use a lot in this particular level. Is, um, it, is it changed on the different environments? Which one you got to use? Oh, the, this one character yeah, in particular. This one, form, yeah. the, this one um, he he. I guess he does kind of turn out to be one of your mainstays. He can climb. He can uh, impale dudes on his back and do all kinds of kind of pretty nasty stuff. So he's he's one of the tougher ones. Yeah, actually. It, one of you know one of the only things I, I thought like uh, wished kind of could have been better about the game was oh that's not uh -oh. Cool. that's not cool that's okay yeah and I just I just bought it so so while you, while you get going again let me ask you a question I'm sure that as Rich Let's and everybody everybody's seen from the questions coming in how does this compare when you're playing on SD versus HD is the experience a lot different it still looks really good in SD but uh, as I wrote in the review uh, it looks exponentially better in HD it, it's just everything stands out a lot more vibrantly and and it's everything is just so sharp and there there's so much really cool detail in the graphics but you're saying this is SD here right yes so I mean this here already looks better than what you could it looks substantially better I'd say than what you could be getting in other game systems these days um, one, no, one and, of the questions I personally have yeah. is is the graphics the only thing that, that takes you to the, the HD era or are, we, are there other elements to this game that you found pretty surprising and pretty cool well is, I mean it's not you mean, a cool it, game but I mean is there anything out of the ordinary except for the graphics that really make it a, um, I, I think it's just a really like creative game on the whole. Actually, it's yeah. it's just got a lot of neat stuff. I mean, what what game lets you turn into a crazy plant with boxing gloves and like, <laughs> and just like do you know dragon punches on orcs? It's like it, it's a it, it's a conventional style of game. It's it, it's your typical you know kind of action adventure game, but the, it's it's sort of an important reminder that there's a lot to be said for games that are just creative and do a lot of neat stuff. I've got a question um, here from Dave Palmer out of Brampton, Ontario, Canada. Yeah. He wants to know, this is actually one of my questions too, he wants to know how's the story in Cameo? Is it as fun and compelling as Rare's past titles? Yeah, it, um, well, yeah, it really is. It's like, the, the story such as it is, it isn't like long-winded, there isn't too much like straight storytelling sequences, mm -hmm. but it's a cool setup for a lot of neat stuff to happen. And, and um, it, it's just kind of your standard cool like fantasy story with uh, you know elves versus trolls duking it out. Now there's a couple different modes. There's like co-op play, is that right? Yeah, there's a co-op mode. The, the, there isn't a lot to the co-op mode. It basically just dumps two players into a level instead of one. Is um, it, how does the, the camera, how does that do it? They split it up? Or? Yeah, it's a split screen. So you, you, you know, the levels aren't really designed around two players so, you so kind of muscle your way through yeah it's more like yeah. if you've got two kids in, in the same household you know complaining that they both want to play the 360 you could let them both play at the same time I gotcha um, Sammy out of Hollywood Florida wants to know is the uh, cameo co-op online or is it only offline it's it's only split screen it's actually kind of weird because the game will say um, uh, the, the game invites you to to choose it says like how do you want to play co-op and the only option is split screen as if there was intended to be Oh, other really? options there, but there aren't any. So, um, yeah. So one of, one of the other questions here that I see coming up. Uh, this comes from Jeff, uh, Jacob Casper out of Wimberley, Texas. How long does the story last? And uh, is it is it for kids? Or is it for everybody? It's uh, the game is rated T. Mm -hmm. um, it's it, but I I definitely think it's suitable. Uh, I mean, my personal opinion is that it's definitely suitable for kids. Um, it, that actually I, I appreciate that. Um, about it because yeah you know the the 360 launch lineup has like a ton of sports games and really kind of gnarly stuff like condemned right. uh, but th this game really is family friendly but but I always qualify that by saying you know it's family friendly in a really good way because if you're if you're someone who's been playing games all your life you could still find a lot of really neat stuff to like about it but if you're a kid you're just gonna really like these kind of cool looking characters and just to, you know all the all the colorful environments and everything. Mm -hmm. How long is the game? It's, um, it took me less than 10 hours uh, to, to kind of blow through it. Uh, part of the reason you could blow through it quickly is that it has this really nice hint system. Mm -hmm. At any time, you could just bust out your book here and talk to this dude, and he actually will tell you contextually what to do next. Oh, cool. So um, on the one hand, it makes a Cameo easy. On the other hand, it keeps it from ever getting frustrating. Uh, which is really nice. I mean, it's just one of those kind of lighthearted games that you could play and and have fun looking at and and just kind of enjoying without without ever getting frustrated. That's awesome. Uh, is there anything people should definitely know about this for before we let you go? Um, 
you know, I, I think it's, it, it's, it's just well worth checking out. It's a, it's a really good showpiece for the system, but, but I think it's one of those games that pretty much anyone who, who likes games will be able to appreciate on some level. It's, it, its charm will uh, kind of dig into you after a while, even if you don't like how kind of... I really wasn't into the look of Cameo herself. She's kind of got that generic like anime kind of bogus anime look to her but yeah. all these other creatures are just super cool and make great you know squishy noises as they walk around and all that stuff excellent well i think uh we're gonna switch over to condemn before all right. we do that we're gonna toss it over to rich and brian we're standing by with project gotham racing 3. take it away guys thank you ryan and greg we are standing by with project gotham racing 3 not as cute and cuddly as cameo no a lot more uh, a lot more hard-edged nice what do you got let's see it we're looking at Project Gotham Racing. Um, I'm actually checking out this sort of pick pick me up games where you just choose a race, and I thought we'd just jump right into a race here uh, in Tokyo. Of sure. All places. What you can do is you can choose to run this right by yourself, or you can add opponents. Uh, I think up to six or seven opponents, and you can choose the difficulty that you wish to have them race at. So you can add a few novice. You can add an easy guy. And they're just randomly getting cars assigned. Yeah, to them. It, based on the class that you chose. Uh, you can actually mix the classes as well, but we're going to mix it up, and then we're going to start the race. And yeah, so we'll be r racing through Tokyo. The, the environments in the game, uh, the cities, Tokyo, uh, Las Vegas, New York City, London, and one other that I th can't think of right now. But yeah, it's all over the world, and they're completely amazing looking, photorealistic. Unfortunately, the load times are a little bit, a um, little bit long in this game. So I just I've noticed gotta, that. But I got to stretch a little bit. It, it, it looks, it looks like it's worth it. It's, to it's, totally, it's totally worth it, because once you're in the environment, you guys aren't going to believe it. It looks we, really sweet. We have a ton of HD footage for this game list right now, so if you're a GameSpot complete member after the show, check it out. But right now, this race is about to get underway. Yeah, so we're, we're in Tokyo, obviously, and I don't know what kind of car I chose here. Looks like so a Corvette. It's probably a Corvette. So yeah, I'm just rolling around now. Rich, let me ask you a question. This looks all right, doesn't it? Yeah, not, this, has, this looks pretty good. This looks pretty good. Well, yeah. let, let me show you what looks really good okay. when you're in the car. Uh... Now for me, that building looks like an inhale. That looks like a big <laughs> Xbox 360, doesn't it? That's the biggest inhale in the in the world. But uh, yeah, I mean, for me, this in-car view is just the best. It's it's probably the single most impressive thing I, I've seen of any game, uh, Xbox 360 game so far. It just looks amazing. If you if you look real close, you'll notice that the the, the windshield is dusty and that you'll you'll see sort of reflections in the mirror. Uh, when you're racing on, on, on like night courses mm -hmm. in, in this game and a car comes up behind you, you can see the reflection of his headlights in your front windshield. That's awesome. And so you know he's like right on your tail. You can actually look around in the car and look and look in the rear view mirror and it screws up my driving but it looks really great. So oh, there's nice one lap. That's great. Nice job. One lap race. But yeah, it looks really great. Um, Show so us another level if you could. I shall do that. Awesome. As soon as, unfortunately, I have 10 seconds to fill. Oh, you do? In these races, it, you have to wait for everybody to finish. But um, uh, here we go. So get out of there, get back to the loading screen. Now, this is only the sort of pick-me-up game. There's also, you know, online play. There's uh, a career mode. They're, they split the career mode between the sort of offline career and your online career. Mm -hmm. And there's all different events that you, can, that you can do there as well. So let's take it to... Now, obviously, this is Project Gotham Racing 3. Right. How does it compare to the first two in terms of gameplay modes? Um, a lot of the same race types. Uh, you'll, you'll see, um, here's a good one there in you go. Vegas. Vegas, baby. <laughs> Let's do uh, A lot of the same type, like you'll see um, the same cone challenges where you have to go through the cones. You'll see the, the, the different types of street races. There's an elimination mode where each lap, the last guy, uh, gets eliminated. Yep, they had and, a burnout. Yeah, I yeah. mean that's that's pretty standard stuff. The game modes in this game really are real straightforward, real real straight ahead. I actually haven't checked out online. In fact, as soon as I get off here, I'm going to go play online awesome. for the first time ever. So I'm really really stoked to do that. And then next week we can bring you back and you can play online again. Absolutely, some of our and viewers. I'm, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And one thing that, I, that I'd like to mention is I don't lose online. You don't? No, I only lose in Madden against Alex. <laughs> uh, he, he will attest to that That's in, right. in a few minutes when he comes back. So actually. this is a night, uh, night course in Vegas. You'll see all the big casinos. You'll see Excalibur. You'll see the MGM. You'll see Bellagio if you look real close. 
and it just looks really sharp. Obviously, Kudos are a big, a big part. This is a Project uh, Gotham game. So. Right, explain the Kudos to people who don't know. Kudos is, is basically sort of a, a, a reward you get for, quote-unquote, driving with style, as I'm not doing here. But uh, if you drift, if you, you know, do a, a nice spin, you'll get uh, Kudos. And a lot, there's actually Kudos challenges where you have to earn a number of uh, Kudos to pass a particular level. Oh, that really just says Treasure Island on it, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I would have figured they would have had like a generic name or well, something. Well, on but. some of them they do. Actually, I think the Wynn Hotel, which I guess is new, yep. the, it just says Casino, Okay. which is a little bit weird. I guess they couldn't get Steve Wynn to Maybe agree. they didn't know the name of it in time. Or? Maybe so. What, one of the things that um, that's interesting about Project Gotham is that it doesn't have as many cars as previous Gothams have had. Well, let me ask you some questions. Sure. James from Sammamish, Washington wants to know... How many different cars are there in Project Gotham Racing 3? There's about 80, but the, the, the thing is about the cars is that every one of them is like a car you are desperate to drive. I mean, they have every Ferrari that I can think of. They have the McLaren F1. They have, actually, yeah, they have a Ferrari F50 Special Edition. I think there's only been like 20 made in the entire world. Nice. And all of the interiors are completely true to life and realistic looking. In the McLaren F1, you drive in the center part of the car. And so there's no side seat. You're just in the center of the car, and you like look to the left, to the left and right, and there's side view mirrors on the left hand side and the right hand side of the car. Cool. So I mean, it just looks really sharp, and it, and actually, if you look down in that car, you mean you rear can, view mirrors, by the way, or oh, yeah, that's what I meant, oh, yeah. rear view mirrors. Um, <laughs> if you look down in that car, you can see your uh, your your foot working the brake and the gas. I mean, the level of detail is just amazing. Nice. David Smith from Scotland wants to know uh, what are your favorite cars in the game. I just mentioned two of my favorite. They're actually the two most expensive cars. The, the McLaren F1 LM, which is just amazing looking and drives like a dream, and that Ferrari F, uh, uh, the Ferrari F50 Special Edition is just amazing. And the, actually the RUF, which is like sort of a Porsche knockoff. Mm -hmm. I've always li really liked that car, and they handle really well in this game. So that's, that's, that's three of my favorite cars in this game. Now, when you say expensive, does that mean when you unlock the the cars you have to yeah, you, microtransact your way up the ladder. Well, it's not ma microtransactions; <laughs> yeah. it's actually credits. Um, okay. And you you get credits by winning by passing events in career mode, and you know based on the the, the difficulty of it of that of a particular challenge, you'll earn a differing amount of credits. Um, the more difficult, the more credits you earn, and then you it's actually pretty easy to earn cars. I I actually was I had the McLaren within just say two or three hours, and that's that that I think is one of you know, probably on purpose on their part, they wanted you to have the best cars quick. Right. Because everybody's going to be using the McLaren, everybody's going to be using that Ferrari online, so why not give it to you quick? Cool. All right, one last question. This is sure. from Brandon Bennett in Greensboro, North Carolina. What is PGR, t PGR 3 TV all about? Yeah, Gotham TV. Actually, I haven't had a, a really great chance to check all of it out, but I do know that uh, for, from a starting point, that's where you're going to... Uh, view all your replays. There's a photo mode, not unlike Gran Turismo 4, where you can take pictures of all your cars, mm -hmm. and you can access all of that, all your replays and all that good stuff uh, from your Gotham TV sort of mode in the in the menu. And I think, and don't quote me on this, but I think you can watch like live online racing as well. But I have to check more of that out, and I'll, I'll really? let you know. I think that's the case, but. I don't want to attest 100% to it. Well, we'll have to have you back next week when the review goes up. Can we say when it is yet? Just tell people to check back soon. Very soon. Check back soon for Brian's full Is it? Should we say who's it? Yeah, uh, it's my review. review. I, I, review I wasn't it. sure. Yes, Great. Absolutely. But as we said, if you're a GameSpot complete member, there's a ton of HD gorgeous footage of this game. And if you're not a complete member, you can still download some pretty nice MPEGs and, of course, stream them. But right now, thanks, Brian. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. We'll have you back next week. Right now, I want to send it back over to Ryan and Greg. who are standing by with Condemn. Take it away, fellas. What's up, man? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, uh, yeah, awesome. You guys did really good over there for Project Gotham. That game looks awesome. <laughs> but my man Greg also has a game that looks pretty awesome over yeah. here. It's, it's, a little, uh, it's a little different from Cameo. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, You're walking around with what appears to be yes. a board with nails in it. Yes, this is, uh, this is affectionately known as 2x4 Nails in Condemned. Uh, Condemned is a game uh, about you uh, trying to track down a serial killer. Really? So it's, uh, it's really all about uh, fighting uh, for your life against these deranged lunatics. The best way I could describe it is that imagine a first-person shooter, except instead of shooting, you're braining people with gnarly clubs like this. Mm -hmm. um, our full re oh who's That's this here yeah so this guy doesn't look friendly and he's gonna come at me with so you're you're fighting these guys that yeah how about that so um these guys the enemies in this game are really really creepy and and it, it's pretty uh it's pretty effective at just 
creating this really Eerie. thick and scary uh, whole environment and it's all uh, you know you view the whole game from a first person perspective and it's definitely one of those games that you want to play uh, in the dark and so forth with preferably with a really loud surround sound system and all that. Now this is from uh, Monolith, right? Same yeah. as did Fear? Yep, the, they just uh, came off of Fear. I, I believe it's a different team and it's a different publisher and everything, but yeah, the guys who brought you uh, Fear are now bringing you Condemned. Now, uh, so this game seems pretty creepy with those guys crawling around. Yeah, th this is uh, this is the, the fourth chapter in the game. Um, it, that's about, you know, th that's like not quite halfway through. Gotcha. So this is when things are starting to get a little crazier. Um, the the storyline, it seems really... Comp well, I'm not going to go into my whole review. <laughs> if you want the whole review, uh, you can come join us at midnight uh, Pacific time when it's going to go up along with our video review. So you'll, you'll get plenty more details there. Excellent. Yeah, a few people were already sending questions asking yeah. when the review is going to go up. Well, the, yeah, that's that. There you go. So, so I mean, throughout the game, is it just straight up walking through, bashing people with stuff? That um, That is pretty much a good way to describe it, yes. The, this game... Um, the way I'd, I'd put it is, this game is very focused. It, it's focused on doing one thing really, really well, and that's getting this like really intense uh, melee combat down. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not fighting. Uh, I'm fighting these. These guys are these guys are all wimps. Let me find a different chapter here. Um, uh, while, you, while you pull up a different cap chapter, yeah. I got a good question from Peter out of Norway. He wants to know how's the melee fighting in Condemn compared to those in Riddick? Is it similar? Can you do combos, or is it just a matter of timing? Yeah. The um, I, I appreciate the, the Riddick comparison uh, because because that is really the only game that comes close to this in mm -hmm. terms of, uh, I, I feel like it must have been an inspiration for this game. Um, it's, it, it's sort of similar to Riddick, but it's also kind of simplified. Yeah. Um, you, you pretty much just have a standard attack. Um, there isn't really a combo system, but what you do have is sort of an offensive a block. You can't just ride the block button like you can in, in a fighting game, for example. You, you, you have to deflect uh, enemy attacks that are coming at you. Yeah, I saw um, that one shot. You had your thing. You're putting it up, trying to block. Yeah, it. and and if you and if you deflect an attack, that tends to open the enemy up for for you to retaliate. Uh, but but the enemy AI does does a lot of pretty cool things. Like it'll, um, y you know, whenever you clock a guy in the face, he'll often just kind of reel around and and hit you with kind of a backhand attack. So th there's there's a pretty fluid feel to the combat, but it's not uh, complicated at all. So it sounds like the, uh, the the one bullet point on the back of this box that says unpredictable enemies with complex AI sounds like it. That, uh, that is uh, fair to say. They are unpredictable at least for a while. Yeah, for a while? Yeah. They, they have a number of, like, the first time you see them do certain things, it's, it's really something else. I yeah. mean, there, there's nothing quite like this game. I, I definitely uh, can't uh, overemphasize that. Th this game, like, gets the artificial intelligence of some deranged lunatic who's trying to kill you down pat pretty much cuz the, these guys will just like angrily smash chairs against the ground and just like kick garbage cans at you and things that are just <laughs> totally nuts i'm and sorry then, did that say birds collected back yes, there by said, the way you, what's going on collect, with that you collect bird carcasses and you collect pieces of metal for oh. reasons that uh... you know what to be honest i don't entirely understand <laughs> even having finished the game so what for that bird flu that's all yes, i'm saying uh, yeah bird flu actually has oh see something is basically you're playing as this character who's wondering uh... what the hell is going on and some crazy stuff starts to happen to him now like that, that i think that might actually fit into this question that ross out of kansas city uh, wants to know he, he he wants to know how essential are the mind trips for the story of condemned mind trips yeah. like you kind of freaking out yeah um, the the story, uh, the story is there as a, uh, basically yeah. Your character starts to question his own sanity gotcha. um, as he's tracking this deranged serial killer. Um, but the story, the story is there to set up the action and to put you into these really dark and dreary kind of environments and fighting for your life. But it's not uh, necessarily at the forefront of the game. The game is really just a setup for this really crazy action that I'm not doing a very good job of demoing right now because there's a lot of kind of walking around and waiting for someone to jump out at you. Now we saw, one of, the, we saw one of the cut scenes right there. How, yeah. how good is the story and the voice actors and all that? The voice acting is, is totally solid. Yeah. I mean, the, the story is really interesting. It's just not necessarily like fully fleshed out, I'd say. I gotcha. 
Um, I got a question from Justin Allen in Brampton, Ontario. He wants to know, how does Condemned stand up some of the better games of the horror genre, namely the Resident Evil series? Does it set a mood like those games so, uh, have done so well? It sets a mood really well. Um, it, it's, I wouldn't, it's hard to compare to the Resident Evil games because it's, really, it's just really different. Um, it's, it's definitely a horror game. It's, it's not, uh, it has these kind of elements of CSI or something like that, but, but you're fighting these really these things that don't seem quite human, um, and, and it's got this... It, it reminds me more in terms of its kind of look and feel of, of the Silent Hill series, if anything. But, but I, I stress that it's, it's an action game. It's not an adventure game. There's not a lot of puzzle solving. It's mostly just you braining people with uh, crazy clubs. So, gotcha. uh, and I Kip, can get behind that. Right on. Kevin, yeah, no, no, that's a good thing. Kevin Darnell out of Calhoun, Georgia, wants to know, does the frame rate lag up when there are explosions or when there are a lot of enemies on screen? You know, uh, I can't even, I don't know that there are any explosions in this game. Oh, wow. There's not a lot of, um, there's not a lot of firefights. There are definitely some guns, um, but here I'm going to find a place where there's definitely okay. action. Well, you pull that up, this actually ties into... Yeah, the, uh, but, but in answer to the frame rate question, the, the frame rate is, is rock solid. Right it's, uh, which is cool, because, yeah, actually, in some of our early looks at this game, the frame rate was pretty choppy, and they clearly mm -hmm. must have just pulled it together uh, before the game came out. Right on. Is, so. Paul Jenkins out of Orlando Fuller wants to know, are there any boss fights? Um, yes. There are, some, there are some big, mean opponents for you to take out. Uh, there, uh, but you know, it's like this game doesn't throw you at tons of enemies at a time. Mm -hmm. It's more like uh, it, it's more like you face off against one or two guys typically. So every every encounter feels like you know you're fighting for your life against this guy, and it's either you or him. Okay. When other guys kind of clock you across the face, it tends to do a lot of damage. So. You, you, you gotta be careful. Huh? Yeah, it's it's a real kind of showdown every time you square off. Now this thing you're loading up, okay, I know these guys are yeah, antsy over here to get some Madden on. Is there anything real quick that you're gonna show us? Uh, I th hopefully I'll show. Okay, well I'll show you one last good one. For okay. Me. Oh. See. Okay. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm I'm gonna make a promise. The video review does a much better job of showing. Yeah. That's the night as, night? Yeah. As you'll find, it's like it's one of those games that. When it when it has its moments, when when stuff starts to go bad and you get into a fight, it's awesome. Right on. Uh, but there's a lot of kind of waiting for some of that stuff to happen. Excellent. Well, thank I'm, you so I'm willing much. to give Greg a second chance oh, if okay. he's about to get in the fight again. Oh, I'm okay geez. with that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Okay, we won't. We won't. Right. Oh. <laughs> Why don't you guys go ahead and take away with How Matt? Mortifying. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Greg. That game looks awesome. And as Greg said, come back at midnight tonight for the full review and video review. Oh. What's that? <laughs> Midnight Pacific, thank you. That is uh, West Coast time. Alex Navarro. Hello, Alex. Navarro? <laughs> That's for an old joke. Came All from right. Thing. Alex Navarro, when the <laughs> Xbox 360 was first announced and we got to see this great teaser footage, one of the videos that really stood out in everyone's mind was Donovan McNabb going up against Michael Strahan in the snow, T.O. scoring a touchdown, doing the bird flap thing. Obviously, that's not happening anymore. But uh, Yeah, that video was awesome. Yeah, the video was awesome. Uh, how's Madden? Does it, it, hey, is it that video? No, no. <laughs> All right, it's Madden. It's yeah. you know, it's it's absolutely football. Uh, it is not just a port of Madden 06 from the other consoles. Cool. It is, the graphics have been significantly upgraded. It is it, you know, it looks fairly different from the, uh, the the console games, but it's also a lot less of a game. Okay, there's less game here. There is quick play, franchise, and online. That's it. That's it. Really. That's 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 Madden. Play one of those three options right Let's, now. All right, we're gonna we? do some quick play. We're all gonna, right, we're gonna we're gonna play as the Patriots here. Oh, it's yeah. nice of you to play against the hometown guys like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna get into a game here, and uh, I've in been a there. second here, you're gonna as soon as you get oh the awesome Bill Cower loading screen. <laughs> it's always Bill Cower. <laughs> that's it, the really freaking really? thing is that it's always Bill Cower doing the screen. I, his, I bet Bill Cower's chin looks great in next generation graphics. That's the that's the really crazy thing. The best looking character models in this entire game are the coaches. Really? The coaches are really detailed and kind of crazy looking. That's an interesting contrast from like NBA 2K6 where they're like the yeah. coaches are among the worst. So, all right, so right here you're going to see the different like the first difference. You there's no coin flip like, you know, the two teams getting together on the field getting ready to flip the coin. It's mm -hmm. just like here's this menu. Okay. okay? And so, you know, I'm going to all right, now we got the little intro. That's an angry-looking Tom Brady right there. I have there. never seen Tom Brady jump 
in his life. <laughs> I saw it once, actually. It was okay. One of the playoff games, I think. All right. They made him do the whole. They made him try jumping. It okay. didn't work out. well. It doesn't work so well because he's kind of a he's kind of a clunky dude. But all right, there's yeah, Corey Dillon, uh, Rodney Harrison. Uh, better times when he still had a leg. Uh, Ready to see more better times when, when he, he had, had a leg. leg. Yeah, that you know. All right. <laughs> So we're in here. Uh, you might notice the voice on screen is not John Madden. Whoa. It is an EA Sports radio announcer. Okay. Um, it's not. Just some guy. I don't really? know who he is. I, I, I don't recognize the name. How's he do? Uh, he's better than Al Michaels. Oh, that's wow. the really freaky thing. Is well, that's that a good they, thing. This was not a bad decision on EA's part. It's a little weird, but it's, 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 it doesn't, you know, it's not a detriment to the game in any way. Nice. So this is this is Madden football right here on the on in, up in your face. Now John Madden is in the game. He still does the Ask Madden thing. He tells you something completely glib and not really that informative. Look at this right here. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to get the zone coverage because they're going to pass the ball, and when you pass the ball into zone coverage, you might get an interception. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's, that's my John Madden impersonation. That's a good impression, yeah, actually. I that wasn't so. bad. That was pretty good. Let's see how you do in zone coverage. So, yeah. Actually. All right. Here we yeah. go. Right there. Oh, oh, yeah. See, he didn't run the ball so well. Now, here's some things you'll notice just in the, in the graphics. You know, obviously things look a lot better. The player models look better than they did in the last generation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, shinier jerseys, sh much shinier helmets. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a couple of little things that are a little off, too. Like, for instance, that ain't no Tim Rattay. No. That don't a, look anything like Tim Rattay. That'll look, like, look a lot like the big dude with the jean jacket and Guitar Hero, actually. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. So, there's, I mean, there's a lot of guys that look, Axel, that's right. Yeah, there's a lot of guys that look exactly like their counterparts. You know, Michael Vick, Donovan McNabb, Tom Brady. He looks a lot like Tom Brady, whatever. Mm -hmm. But it seems like the upper half of players got the realistic looks, and the other guys all kind of look like generic scrubs. That's a bummer. Yeah. I mean, the player models all were pretty de detailed, but they, the faces are noticeably not that great in some, sp uh, some spots. The presentation looks nice. It looks like they definitely got the TV style presentation with the graphics on the bottom there. Yeah, no, the, the, menus, the menus are very slick. You know, it, it, it gives you pretty. Easy ways to get all your stuff together for the dope. Oh, oh I'm gonna him. hit the oh oh oh, 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 oh! Are you kidding me? Oh, there we go. You better make right. sure. I want to see some offense. Yeah, here. we're gonna get some offense here in a second. If you're new to uh, football coverage between Alex and myself, we're both Patriots fans. You because really, you're a Patriots fan. Yeah, just you figure. <laughs> I, n I never would have guessed that. No, yeah, <laughs> being from New England and you, just because you realized at a young age that they were a good team to, to, to root for. The closest team to me was the Washington Redskins, and I hate the Washington Redskins. I'm not afraid to say that <laughs> to the world on TV right now. All right, we have a couple questions here flying in from the GameSpot Complete members. Justin from Concord, North Carolina, he says, I know Madden lost some modes, but does it still have the practice mode? No. Even in the franchise? No, I, 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 it might have it in the franchise. I haven't honestly messed around with the franchise as much as I probably should have by this point. I, but I, it's I, not I, on the main it's menu. It's not the main menu. Like, there is, there is no main practice mode. There's no mini camp. There's no any of that stuff. You can't, you can't scout rookies in the franchise mode. Well, you can draft them, but you can't scout them. So there's just a lot, a lot of little stuff like that. It's just not there. And I didn't snap the ball fast enough. Oh, you didn't? That's no. right, you're just trying to set yourself back there a little bit. Yeah, so, no, so I can, so I can bomb it out. Sure. Uh, let's see, uh, Chris Pope, Memphis, Tennessee. The question we're getting about a lot of these games, Can you have you played it on both a standard TV and a high-def TV yet? Yes. How does it look on a standard? It looks good on a standard TV. Uh, cool. The menus are a little blurrier. Things are not quite as, as crisp, obviously. And the HDTV, obviously the way to go, but it doesn't. It's not like with you know some of the other games where it's just you know it looks like an Xbox game when it's not in HD. It, you, you notice the difference in the player models and like the environment and stuff dude. like that. I keep forgetting to you snap the ball. the ball. I'm sorry, I'll stop asking you questions. Yeah, it's, you're distracting me, man. No, um, actually, no, I'm going to keep asking you questions. Okay. All right, here's another question. Here, Kevin, I'm going to snap this ball real quick. All right, you snap it, and you. I want to see. I want to see six right here. Okay. I'm putting that on you. With an angry, angry Tom Brady. He's an angry Tom Brady. Yes. Now, obviously, the oh. big addition to Madden this year was the vision cone. Passing yeah. cone, is that, is that in here? It is, but it's kind of weird the way it's in. I, I haven't checked to see if there's like an option just to turn it on or turn off. It defaults to off. Mm -hmm. um, the CPU's, uh, CPU uses it defaulted to on. And I've noticed that if you like go back here and you change your primary receiver, mm -hmm. and then you snap the ball, it's on. Oh. I don't know what that's about. I haven't quite figured out the, the ins and outs of that whole system quite yet. But it's about you facing third and 20. Is what it's about me about. facing third and 20. I'm not afraid to do it. You know, I, the, the porous San, uh, San Francisco defense here. 
I did see you. I did see you light up Brian something fierce though, right before the show. That is true. I, 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 I defeated Brian in an online match. Uh, oh, what was the score? It was like eighteen to nine or something. Brian had some problems kicking. Now, did they change the kick meter in this game? Or? The kick meter is all new. Hey, that's a nice. That's no, a nice, the, nice, the, nice play. They didn't show. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's all right. That's all right. I, I completed a pass. See right there. Oh, yeah, proof. Your, proof. Boom. Look right there. Boom. Yeah. All right. Boom. <laughs> uh, yes. But so kicking's hard. It, it is and it isn't. Like, it's fine in normal difficulty. Like, the meter moves at a, you know, a basic pace. It works okay. Online, they must have ramped up the difficulty for the default, like, ranked matches because, like, it's just like zoom, 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 zoom. This is your last chance, by the way. This is your last okay. chance. Oh, you're running it? Oh, and that didn't right, All right, one last question. I want you to, I want you to check in the end zone. We'll see what happens. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll do a hammer. All right, this is from a uh, regular contributor, Kevin in, in Georgia. He wants to know, George, Bur George Bush versus Jeb Bush. Is that in the game? Uh, I have not seen it either. <laughs> uh, and I'm, I I wouldn't look for it. <laughs> I'm 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 gonna get I'm gonna guess no. Yeah, all I right. heard it. Huck it up. Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna throw this out here. The stadium looks very nice, by the way. The stadium does look very nice. The the stadium environments all look really really good. Uh, the the crowds, you know, in cutscenes look really awesome. <laughs> like on the field, maybe not quite as much. But oh, there it is. Oh, there oh, it is. Oh, oh you see, well, that's, you're, that's your last. That's, Dion, that's you're just the you're, gonna you're killing me. Out. You're killing Sorry. your own father, Larry. <laughs> nice job, Alex. Thank you. For more information on Madden, they can wait. Right? Yeah, it'll be up. It'll be up soon enough. Yeah, Keep, it'll get there. Thanks, Alex. No problem. Hey, let's kick it on over to Ryan, who's now joined by Brad Shoepot Shoemaker, where he's playing Peter Jackson's King Kong, the official, the official game, game with the longest movie. name. Yes. yes, take it away. Yes, so we got some King Kong here. Uh, you may have heard there's a movie coming out in December. Uh, it's by Peter Lord of the Rings Jackson. Uh, so the game is made by Ubisoft. is actually helmed by uh, Michelle Ancel, who's you know Rayman. Yeah, totally. Beyond Good and Evil. So we the got, dude, we got, dude knows how to make some games. Yeah, he especially considering what I've played of this, I'd say he knows how to. It's make pretty some good, games. yeah. It's, just, it's looking, it's looking good so far. Now, 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 correct me. Is this is this a launch game or is this gonna come after? It is a launch it game. Is launch it's launch game. Out, it's out on Tuesday next week. So, in fact, it's out on every platform next week. That's awesome. Not, not just the 360. Uh, we got got some kind of fat load times here, so we'll oh, really? have a little chat here. While is that gonna be up. in the final? You think, or is that gonna be just uh, in this one? It's hard to say with you know. Yeah. And discs and that kind of thing. It, it, it could be improved. I gotcha. So, uh, so just to set people up, I think they probably know by now. You get to play both as Jack. Yeah, you play Jack, the uh, screenwriter who's played by Adrian Brody in the movie, and also obviously King Kong himself. Um, Jack is actually what, from what they've said, around seventy percent of the game. So that's what we're showing you here. Okay. Uh, so you're just, uh, as you can see, you're just a dude. Just walking around. Yeah. And I actually didn't see where those guys ran. So. Okay, that was totally distracting. <laughs> I think they went that way. Yeah, I think you're right. Now, uh, while you find your way around in the dark, yes. I'm going to actually ask you a couple questions if you don't mind. Yeah, go for it. So, you've played this version, you've played the other versions, I take it? Uh, yeah, I played the Xbox version a little bit. Let's, let, let's get to the question that everybody wants to know and love is yeah. uh, how much better does it look? Uh, it's, it's better. Um, the other two ver versions look really good too. Though. They actually developed this game for the PS2. That, oh, was, wow. that was their lead platform, so all the art assets and everything were created for the PS2. Uh, and then the 360 team actually developed some tools to kind of automatically generate detail based on that art. So a lot of this stuff was actually just done by a machine. But as you can see, you know, it looks pretty good. Actually, you get some action going on right here. Uh oh. Yeah. Oh, that guy didn't make it. No, he really didn't. <laughs> I think that guy's a goner. This is a, a game that's rated M, I take it? Yes, I would assume so. Anyway. Right. There, there is definitely some violence in this one. Now, how, how far have you actually played through the game? Uh, I got about two hours into it. Uh, what do you think? Uh, it's, it's, it's very solid. It's, it's kind of like a roller coaster ride, you know? Really? Yeah. How so? Um, it's just, I mean, it's just one sequence like this after another, basically. Just really big action, yeah, like, really you know, big. They're just constantly throwing enemies at you. Uh, obviously, we haven't seen the movie yet, but I would imagine a lot of these sequences are probably right out of the movie. I got you. Now, you don't have it here, but usually Jack is, at some point, he usually has a gun in his hand. Yeah, right? yeah, I actually totally forgot to grab that gun. Uh -oh. So I'm going to have to improvise with this uh, bone that I picked up here. I don't think you're going to make it. Uh, it's, it. It's possible. Oh, really? Oh, I don't think it's going to happen, oh. actually. Yeah. <laughs> there are these like kind of found weapons in the environment everywhere. Basically, what I'm trying to do is distract this T-Rex here while, uh, well, now I'm dead, so that's, you gotta, that's you, actually not going to happen. You basically got to drop that thing so the T-Rex kind of gets interested in eating Yeah, yeah, him, you right? actually, you take down those kind of pterodactyl-looking things, and uh, it kind of goes over and snacks on those for a little while, and that lets these guys open up this door here. Is it all in-game cinemas? Or yeah, is there, yeah, yeah, there's, there's no FMV whatsoever. It's, it's all 
what you see here is kind of what you get. But that dude kind of looks like Jack Black over there. It does, actually. Yeah. If, uh, I don't think Rex here is going to give me a chance to get up close to these guys, but the, the facial detail is actually really impressive. I got a few yeah. questions I'm going to throw at you, if you don't mind. Let's see if I can take this guy down. Um, do you by any chance, I know you've only played a couple hours into it so far, yeah. do you by any chance have any idea of how long the game is just yet? Um, guessing it's... Well, you know, we can't we can't make too much speculation ahead of time like that, but okay. So you're not quite sure just yet? Looks like Hayes is getting chomped on over here. Uh-oh, you got an up-close shot. Uh, but, you know, you can imagine a lot of movie games, they follow the storyline of the movie pretty closely, so it's going to be a pretty kind of you know, condensed narrative. I got you. So. Kevin Kim out of Fullerton, California, wants to know, why is there no heads-up display on the screen? Uh, there, there's actually a lot of adventure game elements. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of kind of like light puzzle solving involving background elements and stuff, so they're trying to basically immerse you in the environment as much as they can. I'm always a big fan of it. Yeah, absolutely. They do a really good job of it. I mean, like, there are no power-ups to pick up. You know, if you get a gun, it's because somebody hands it to you or they drop it from a supply plane. Gotcha. You're pretty you know close what? to that guy. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to I'm just gonna see if I can piss him off here. Okay. While you're doing that, Nick Mendez wants to know, it might be early to say, but how does the 360, uh, the 360 version compare to the other two? We kind of covered that. Yeah. Let me go on to the other one. It's the, it's the same game. It just looks better. Um, yeah, I know. I'm trying to do something about that. <laughs> if you don't do it this time, we should move on. There's another. There's another we, stage. There's actually. Up, right? There's actually a Kong level okay. here too. You know what? I could just kind of try to piss this guy off. But we can certainly check out some Kong action. Ross out of Kansas City. Kansas City wants to know how large is oh, he's the. Mad uh, now. I'm sorry. He's mad now. <laughs> Have you gotten to see any of the New York environment yet? No, no. actually. Well, obviously, that's. If you know the Kong storyline, that's pretty that's, close to the end. Yeah, right? that's kind of the climax of the film. So gotcha. We haven't gotten there yet. In fact, Ubi and the movie studio too are playing that part pretty close to the best. So I gotcha. Um, I want to save the surprise. Justin right. out of Ontario wants to know: Do you prefer playing as Jack or Kong? Uh, Kong is actually, like I said, he's only like 20, 30 percent of the game, and those they're they're actually real short action levels, like five minutes a piece. In I fact, you. I'll show you one right now is, if we have time. I think we have enough time, okay. right? Yeah, it's, we have plenty of time, dude. Excellent. Okay. So let me. Uh, let me pull out your blade. Yeah. Let's see, let me quit out of here. So what are your overall impressions of the Xbox 360 so far? You've been playing it's, some games. It's great. I mean, the, the, like the dashboard setup, the way you can interface like music players and all that sort of stuff, it seems really streamlined, Pretty really like really thoughtfully designed. So. Right on. Are, are you uh, HGTV bound yet? I'm not. I'm, no? I'm going to chill for a while. Yeah. I think I'm gonna You're let, content with the SD? Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to let things get a little cheaper first. But, uh... I got a question here from Louis out of Sweden. Okay. Um, as far as you know, the story is pretty much identical to the movie, correct? Well, not having seen the movie, we can, oh, assume, yeah, we can assume it's pretty close. <laughs> yeah. Dodge Stone wants to know uh, if I was going to—he wants to know if he was going to play this movie before he went or this game before he went and saw the movie. Do you think it ruined it for him? Do you think? Um, well, obviously, you're going to get the whole storyline, but then again, King Kong, the movie came out in what 1933. Yeah, I guess that's I mean, true. Like, you know, it's kind of been known. What part do what you happens. know? Yeah, yeah. What, do, what does happen? The, the big oh. monkey dies at the end, right? Oh, dude! <laughs> you don't want to ruin that for people. <laughs> Whatever, or that movie. Is, maybe there's a twist on it that we don't know there you about. Go. You never know. Never know. The right, reimagining so. of King Kong. Yes. Who was in that movie that was that? What, Jeff Bridges? Is that, that dude? Jeff I Bridges? Forget. Jeff, Jeff Bridges, Bridges was in the, uh, like the, the 1980 the, version, right? The 1980 version. I love that version. That was, version, that was, that was by the, 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 the way. Twin Towers one. Now, this uh, one is actually based more on the black and white, the older version. Yeah, this is this is like Peter Jackson's love letter to the original movie. It's like the 33 one. Now, this is Kong you're, you're playing as, and you're whooping up on this T Rex. Yeah, right? yeah, so this is one of the, the Kong levels I was talking about. Like I was saying, these only come in every hour or two, and they're like five, ten minutes long. And you're basically, you just play as Kong, beat up on some dinosaurs, you know, swing on vines, whatever. So. Uh oh, he's trying to get you, huh? I'm trying to fight this guy off right now. I'm trying to get him back. There we go. There's like one or two ways you can get rid of this guy, right? Oh, oh no. That's a little oh, trouble. Oh, having some problems here. Keep in mind, this is not Final Code. Yeah, this, code, this so. is not Final Code at all. I, I I played a much newer version of it last week, and it, it's nothing like that. Gotcha. All, so. You're going to just, oh, oh, there it this is. is. This is totally M-rated, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yeah, Kong's obviously pissed here. Here's here's Andero, the actress that's on the island, and Kong basically falls in love with her. And we'll do pretty much whatever he has to do to keep her alive, so... Here's an example of the uh, the platforming. This I I I played this sequence before. Oh. I had so much fun playing it, this it's, part. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it it kind of automates a lot of the the swinging and stuff for you. Um, there's not a lot of room for error. I mean, you, you know, like it's you're, you're, you're not. Right? Yeah, I mean, you're not gonna fall off a branch and die because right. that would be boring. 
you know, like King Kong obviously is pretty good at jumping around and swinging on trees and stuff. So. Right on. Well, thank you for showing us yeah. the King Kong. Absolutely. I think we're going to check in with our good friend Rich Gallup, uh, who is standing by with Amp3, isn't that right? I sure am. Actually, thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Brad. I'm standing by with Ryan Davis, who's standing by with Amp3. Hey, what's going on, Rich? Hello, Ryan Davis. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. My hands all sweaty. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, it's been a long show. I've been, I've I've been gripping onto this Xbox 360 Mine's controller. I finally have a controller here as I well. I gave you a controller, too. I've got Amp3 here. We've got it hooked up. I'm going to say, I'm going to put it out there from what I've seen just walking around watching all you got lucky jerks play these games. Yeah. This is my favorite game. Just, this is just the craziest. The, yes. I mean, a lot of these games are like kind of graphical showpieces. These are, hey, look, here's the Xbox 360. Here's what it can do. Right. But that's not really the focus in Amp 3. Amp 3 is a lot crazier than that. Great. Amp 3 is about being crazy. In fact, we're going to play a, a, a little challenge here, uh, a little two-player challenge. Now, from what I can tell, I've, I've played through the whole story mode of the game, which is crazy. Uh-huh. Uh, brief, brief summary. I can't even okay. summarize it. Uh, anime, sock puppets, uh, comic books, <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy games. VII, <laughs> ninjas. N ninjas. I really, I, I'd pass out before I could properly describe it right now. So, sure. Uh, there is, from what I can tell, there is no proper multiplayer mode. However, there are a couple of challenges uh, hidden in the game that you can play or that you need to play with two players. So we're going to play the Snowball Busters here. Okay. Uh, we're in uh, Valle Nevado in uh, Chile. Right, right now. So basically what you have here is you, you start off with this, uh, the, the, the main map, and then you go to a lift, and then you have to ski your way or, or snowboard your way down to, to your challenge. Uh, oh, this game looks just, pretty good, dude. It's, it's a pretty good looking game. I would say that the, the thing that really stuns, though, is that draw distance, is how far you can see. There are actually a couple of uh, hang gliding sequences uh, in the game that uh, show you like the entirety of the, the mountain that you're on at once, and it, it looks pretty amazing. From that perspective, I'd say though, I mean, comparatively to some of the other 360 stuff that I've been seeing, it's not blowing me away in that regard. It blows me away in a completely different regard. You know, this is going to take me too long, so I'm just going to switch over to snowmobile. Awesome. And we're just going to ride. All right. So, oh, and then I'm going to bail. Oh no. So I'll get there eventually. That little rainbow triangle is point, pointing you. Yeah, on yeah. It basically, when you when you choose the, a challenge that you want to take on, then uh, that little rainbow shows up, and uh, you want to follow it till you're at the end of the rainbow. A lot of people on the there's, slope. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of action. Let me do a little Cordova there. A little nice. aerial trick on my snowmobile. Uh, there's yeah. There's there's a lot of peripheral action happening. Uh, you'll regularly have other riders and snowboarders. No, I'm going the wrong way now. I passed it. Didn't you wait? Didn't you pass that? Like, I passed it a while ago. There's that big rainbow thing that you were just talking about. <laughs> you're gonna go check it out, and then you just drove right by it. Oh, don't you have any questions for me? No, I said no. Someone send in some M3 questions, and we will ask me about we'll M3. Ask me about why it's crazy. All right, why is this game crazy, Ryan? I, because it. This is a scrapbook of a game. The visual style. The, the actually scrapbooking plays a major role in the storyline of the I don't, game. I've never heard of scrapbooking, scrapbooking as is, a function. Scra scrapbooking is when you like... As a pastime, as a it hobby. Is, you collect clips of, of different media. Turn right, dude. I'm, I'm seeing it. <laughs> the TV's far away. Okay. Okay. So yeah. here we are. We're at the... But yeah, so this game is really all about scrapbooking. So, Fling Fever. Press These, start this on is, the other controller. Is a, this is a type of uh, challenge that they have in the game. This one is specifically two-player. Uh... They, they have these little sledding moments in the game where you, in, instead of snowboarding, you're sledding. And the whole purpose is to hurt yourself as much as you possibly can. Awesome. Uh, you you want to just rack up a massive medical bill. So here the challenge is going to be for you and me. We're going to be tied together. Okay. And we're going to see who can do the, the, the most damage to themselves. Now what we're going to do is what can, what buttons hit, hit A uh -huh. to, to make yourself start going. And then the R and L triggers are going to... Uh, dictate whether you fly off or not. If you hit the Y button, you will just automatically bail. I'm like gone. That. So I'm going to go bail oh, you the, win. these boxes. I'm actually not getting any damage whatsoever. I don't know what just happened. We didn't get any damage. We didn't get any damage. We didn't hurt Maybe ourselves. Maybe because I wasn't there. Like, where, what am I doing right here? You fell off a little early. Let's I'm, try that. We'll I'm do it hanging again. out. We're, right. just, we're just going to restart that challenge. Okay. It's easy enough. That's the, the cool thing about the game is that if you're in the middle of a challenge and you don't like the results, it's really easy to just restart it and it just restarts instantly. So. Here we go again. All right, so right. I won't hit any buttons. Don't hit any buttons. Let's I'll just, just fling each other it. around. We're going to try to okay. pick up some of these icons. Oh, you still got an icon. I hit right, a cowboy. You hit a cowboy. That's good for you. I like hitting. Yeah. Oh, oh and I hit a house. You hit a house. Oh, oh, oh. I'm winning right now, by the way. You are. Oh, but now oh, I'm no, winning. Oh, now you're winning. I'm done. Oh, no. Oh. oh. What did I just. I don't know what I just did, but I'm at 200,000. 
I think you just slammed your head. I actually had a, a, a moment last night when I was playing the game where my guy slammed Keep his going. head directly into a metal pole and it just racked up like 200,000 <laughs> points immediately. I'm like, oh God. There it is. So there you are. You get the winner. crown. You're the winner. Awesome. So the, the strange thing about Amp 3 is, unlike the other two Amp games, this is uh, really story driven. There's, there's a, a, a full-on story mode that you play through all this in. We're going to put out of this. Okay. Um, and as you said, the story is just crazy. The story is, is crazy. It starts off with you as being just sort of this generic snowboarding guy living up in Tahoe. Mm -hmm. um, hanging out with your crew. And then one thing leads to another. Uh, another and your crew splits up with you. Um, this is all told through cutscenes, which vary in just sort of bizarre media. Can you show a cutscene, I can please? show a cutscene just to give you an idea. I'm not going to show... Don't show any of the later ones. People got to earn those. Okay, we'll show something. We'll show Wiener Land. This is, okay. an, this is an early one. This is uh, Wiener Boy, one of the members of your crew, mm -hmm. uh, builds this sort of weird little snow park. So we're going to take a look at it. Snow surfing here. action playset that provides hours of jibtastic fun. Included are action figures you can pretend are your friends awesome. and make them say whatever you want. Here's J Dog. I'm rad. Hunter. Stop looking at my butt. Sebastian. This is just one type and of cutscene. And everyone's favorite type. little snow surfer, of, like, Wiener Boy. There's a lot of live That's action. There is like just dudes. Crew, like you can tell people that work on the game. Why, yes, mm -hmm. Just hanging you. out, like doing these little skits, like to, to further like on the story. To it's sure just the, the way that it jumps joke. between media types is really amazing, and it constantly keeps you guessing. It it as crazy. This is really early on, right? This is pretty crazy. The game never stops getting crazier until the very end. The very end. Is Wiener the most boy. fevered so pitch of crazy next? that the game has to offer. You. And I gotta say, the ending cutscene is you, you, truly inspired. You, you, you got to watch the, the ending. Can we see one more? I'll show you one Not, more. Don't go too far, but yeah, one more. Uh, what's, a, what's a good one here? Some of these are. Alright, we'll show you the Freezorg. Right. That's your friend uh, uh, Sebastian. He's training you for this upcoming event. Okay. And uh, he's a little bit spacey. He's kind of a weird guy. I know it's. Okay. So this is this is one go. of the challenges that we voyage uh, to the Slash Mahal, the crusty snow fortress, right? an eternal prison of so is this the Freezor, Freezor, right? Freezor. God yes, of lightning, <laughs> ice. I, 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 truly, I mean, going from from what you saw in the last one to that, I that, can't describe. That's weird. That's that's the breadth of the weirdness. You got you have paper in your hand. I do have questions. Awesome. All right, let's see. Uh, do 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 do. Uh, Colby from Santa Monica, California. M2 is kind of a disappointment. Is this an improvement? Can you even compare Gameplay to, is totally different. Okay. Uh, it's, it's, the other Amped games were pretty hard, pretty punishing uh, gameplay-wise. This has been stripped down significantly. Uh, honestly, from what I've played, the snowboarding is fun, it's responsive, not the best part of the game. Okay. The actual, right. the actual snowboarding. Can I put you on the spot? Go. All right, Justin Allen, Brampton, Ontario. So far from what you've experienced in the two games, can you make, make your call between SSX on tour and Amp3? Totally different games. Compl you can't even... It's, it's like, yeah, can I... I no. Like, what, what is... It's, I mean, yes, they're both snowboarding games, but Am Amped is more of like a Tony Hawk style of snowboarding where it's, it's a lot more trick-based. Mm -hmm. uh, SSX is more of a racing game. It's a racing game with tricks. Cool. This, this is less about the racing, so... It's, it's, a, yeah, it's a different type of game. Great. Well, I think we're going to wrap the show up, Ryan Davis. Are you ready to wrap the show up? I'm totally ready. Can I, I want you to keep playing. Can I, I want keep you playing? I'm I just want to do something crazy. Here. Ryan McDonald, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome. I was standing over here playing some King Kong, which is super cool. Like You saw the one thing where he breaks open the jaws. The other right. really cool one, actually, Roger Stone, he has him on his back. And he pulls him and breaks his back over here. Oh, he does like yeah, and he does like the King Slender yeah, move, drops cool. him on the head. It's really cool. Kind of, it's it's pretty sweet. I've been having a blast playing. Yeah, someone did it yesterday, so I can't take credit for it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it is the King Slender move. But uh, nice. Ryan, we do have one last thing we have to show that is not. Uh, actually, Xbox 360 related. Oh, that's right. So yeah. you you actually you, you misspoke at the top of the show because we actually do have one tape segment, right? Yeah, I was lying. Actually, I didn't misspeak. Okay. I was totally lying. <laughs> so to cut to the that chase, was, I knew it was coming. <laughs> Ryan, please explain it for us. Sure. There, there's a clip that we're going to show for Battlefront 2. Uh, it's funny because I think a lot of people might not know that there's this really cool hero mode in the game. Um, you play, you think you play on like most Isley, and you get some. Basically, it allows you to pick all the really cool characters like Darth Vader, Boba Fett, and Ewoks, and all kinds of fun stuff. Um, and then you run around like you know Battlefront 2 style, jacking each other. But since it's the hero mode, you actually have the uh, the lightsaber and the guns and all that stuff. So it's it's a lot like Battlefront 2, but it's with the characters you know and love and really want to play with. 
um, and then it has that whole thing. So it's, it's, it's really cool, and we're, we're going to show a, a clip of it uh, right now, actually. Yeah, that was a look at the, the action in the Star Wars. You just go to Mos Eisley and you pick the assault mode. Isn't that right, Rich? That, I believe that's it. And it's like this crazy little thing in there. And if you haven't played it yet, if you have Battlefront 2, you want to be totally Darth Maul versus Luke Skywalker and just prove how hard Luke actually is. Not very. No, he is the hardest. We had that as a trivia question on the show like a year ago. Who is the hardest Jedi? And it's so Luke. Okay. Luke is mean. He kills his dad, dude. This is true. He kills his dad. <laughs> That's pretty harsh. It is. We've given away a lot of prizes recently. Oh, man. Last week, we gave away so many prizes. Uh, actually, this is two weeks' worth of prizes. Two weeks ago, we yeah. gave away even the, more yeah, prizes. Ryan, do you have your list of prize winners, too? I gave you one. You so gave you me one? Could, yeah, it Let me was see here. Over there. Oh, I know this guy. Yes, I do. Oh, you do? I do. Yeah. All right, well, here's, here's what's happened. Over the last two weeks, we've given away, uh, we've given away three copies of NBA 2K6. For the... For the Xbox 360. We've given away three copies of Infected for the for the PSP, and we last week we gave away four of these Speeds for three Speeds for three. I'm sorry, Fanatec, Fanatic, however you say it, Xbox steering wheels. That's a big heavy steering wheel. I right know. There. You, you, you see me hear me <laughs> going with it's, that? It's got some heft. What do you bench? Fifty five. All right. Anyways, <laughs> we also given away plenty of passes to the game. We've actually, technically speaking, we've given away uh, 10, 10 tickets to the game, but unfortunately, like the instructions we give were too hard. Because we asked people to include their birth date. And they couldn't do and that. And we've only had, I think, six people do that so far. Well, it's six winners. Exactly. Six winners who will be uh, receiving free passes to game. They are, start it off, Ryan Davis. Uh, Chris Darn of California. Ryan, do you have your list? Jacques Perturis of California. Antonio Rosas of California. Tajeev Coley of Washington. Mark Patton of California. And Chase G of California. If Chase you... G, that's a great rap name. It was G. It's G-E-E, <laughs> so it's one of the two. I said G. G is good. I G, like not, not so... Unless no, it's but France. you will be receiving your uh, passes to the game very quickly. That's the and games, uh, and entertainment, or games and music experience. And we'll give away, we'll, you want to give away five more passes right now? I don't. Do you? You want to run? I don't have them on me, so I can't give away. Uh, yeah, we'll give you, right. It's really soon. It's December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. They're all going to be there hanging out with hieroglyphics and all these bands and playing all these games. Kid and, and people, I, I'm throwing the gauntlet down. All these people always email me and want to do some Counter-Strike thing. Yeah. There will be two machines. They will have Counter-Strike source on it. Yes. Right here. You want some? Want a piece of me? Come. Are you, are you talking like mono a mono? Yeah, straight up one on one. The the raw dog. Wow. That's serious. Yeah. That, all right. So well, the gauntlet is thrown down. Yes. Come uh, play Ronald McDonald. All right. Here, the, here's your trivia question then. If you're a GameSpot complete member and you're going to be in the San Francisco Bay Area December 2nd, 3rd, and 4th, I want you to give us your full mailing address, your birth date, so if you can know that uh, you can play M rated games. And I want the words, yes, Ryan, I accept your challenge. Just say that. And uh, first five people do that. One of themselves passes the game. It's that, the other thing it's that easy. The other thing I want to mention about the about the game, yeah. you're going to be doing some button mashing there live, right? I know. People keep bugging about button mashing, <laughs> and we will bring it back as soon as we have time to do it. But, uh, yeah, we will be doing live uh, truncated versions of button mashing where people will be playing uh, games against each other, against GameSpot editors, and other people. And we're going to have tons of more info about games, so keep it tuned here, and we'll uh, give you the updates as we get closer. We will. Actually, and we're going to be really close, because I don't think we're not going to have a show next week because we get next Thursday off. <laughs> So, uh, oh, know. that's right. It's Thanksgiving, huh? Yeah, yeah. totally. That's so crazy. soon. Very yeah. soon. Just and for more about game, you want to get your own tickets, experiencegame.com. Check it out. And you can find uh, a link to it on the front page of GameSpot. Yes, there's pe- things all over the place, and we will see you there. It is going to be a good time. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. But uh, let's give away some more stuff. Uh, NBA 2K6, we got uh, three copies of it. We do, and the question was uh, brought to me by Brian Eckberg, who is the actual man who is the color commentator in the original NBA 2K and the man's name is Rod Brooks. Rod Brooks. Rod Brooks. He's a local guy, I guess. 
And the three winners were Ryan Davis. Uh, Clayton Schultz of Canada. Ryan McDonald. David Brown of Florida. And Travis Barton of Washington. Congratulations. Congratulations. As soon as we get them, we'll send them off in the mail. And the three copies of Infected. What was your trivia question, Ryan? Uh, the trivia question was, which character from what other Majesco. Majesco game was featured in Infected? The answer we were looking for was Blood Rain. All right. And the three winners were Andy Torres of Florida. Angie McCauley of Utah. And Jason Westendorf, Westendorf of California. Great. And we had four steering wheels last week. Jeff asked for three cars that can be found in Need for Speed Most Wanted, because that might be your last chance to play a racing game on the Xbox <laughs> with this steering wheel. Just about. But, uh, and so all kinds of people listed all kinds of cars. And the first four people to do it right were Kevin Kim of California. Ruben Ferreira of Massachusetts. Oh, you're, I'm not. <laughs> why did I get stuck? I can't even read this. Uh, Elio Q of New York. Elio Quachochiochi. I'm sorry. I'm so and sorry. And Josh that's Sturgis cool. of Oregon. Congratulations. You got all. Sturgis. That's so easy. I tried qua Quachochiochi. Yours, yours, is, yours is seven. Mine's like 18 letters long. Listen, I, at least I tried it. But that is a great <laughs> show. We have all kinds of Xbox so 360 stuff 360 up on the stuff. site right now. There'll be more coming. Um, send us your questions. Next Tuesday, obviously, the uh, Xbox 360 launches. We will not, unfortunately, be broadcasting live from zero hour in the desert, right, Ryan? Yeah, because it's like it's a desert. They don't have internet. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 we are. We have figured out a way that we will be sending some updates, uh, both text and vid video. So be sure to keep it locked here, and we'll have all kinds of fun stuff. That'd be cool. So yeah, enjoy your uh, your Xbox 360 launch, and uh, we'll see you in two weeks. Wait, I can't close that. I got to thank everyone. Ryan, thanks. Ryan, thanks. Brad, thanks. Alex, thanks. Greg, thanks. Jeff, thanks. Am I missing anyone? Actually, there's one thing you're missing. Crew, thanks. You, we're actually we're doing one, live, one, one more live show before we get to Thanksgiving. We are? Yeah, you're forgetting. Day of Defeat tournament tomorrow. Oh, for real? Yeah, totally. Yeah, good That's call. Right. Tell them all about Game it. Center. Yeah, yeah, Day of Defeat. Uh, GameSpot, complete members. I think everybody signed up that's going to sign up. Uh, but you can go to the, the Game Center website and see some information. Um, and we're going to be broadcasting live. I think it starts at 6, is that right? That sounds right to me. Some, somewhere around there. We'll Keep see you there. It'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be I'll fun. learn a new game on the fly again, just like we did with UT. It'll be <laughs> great. It'll be great with UT. That look of concentration on Ryan Davis's face means he wants to get back to playing Amp 3. I'm, I'm and, already back to playing Amp 3. I'll go back to watching here, it. but Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to all of you, and we'll see you in two weeks. Happy Thanksgiving, right here on the spot.